ancient Sumer, the Anunnaki, and the ancient alien theory. This, of course, is the same of the theory and the explanation that we got from the Emerald Tablets that were written by Thoth, the uh, godlike entity of wisdom, from the Atlantis, ancient Atlantis. Thoth was an Atlantean. And he explained to us that the people of Atlantis were graced with a lot of knowledge, wisdom, advanced technology, to the point that they became so haughty and egocentric that they abused that knowledge, especially the interdimensional zapping in and out of those parallel universes to the detriment of humanity and to the world. And he said that a lot of these Atlanteans escaped the flood, they went to other areas of the world, and they have uh, even gone to ancient Egypt, becoming the quote-unquote gods of Egypt. And uh, they had not only flight flying around the world, they also had space travel. Now, ancient Sumer, the Anunnaki, and the ancient alien theory, this is by Stephen McConley on Collective Spark. This is according to uh, Zachariah Sitchin as well. This is written by Stephen, Stephen Foster, Ancient Code. Sumer is a historical region of the Middle East, the southern part of ancient Mesopotamia, between the alluvial plains of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. The Sumerian civilization is considered, according to many authors, as the first and oldest civilization on the surface of the planet, even though there is evidence that the Vinca culture from Europe is older. Although the origins of its inhabitants, the Sumerians, is uncertain, there are numerous hypotheses as to where they came from. The ancient Sumerians were the first people who started building actually organized cities laid out using actual city grids like we see in modern day cities around the world. The ancient inhabitants of this Mesopotamia invented sewer systems, cobblestones frequently used in the pavement of early streets, and they were also taught in agriculture, but most importantly, they were the first civilization that invented what many believe was the first known writing system by using the cuneiform script on clay tablets. This entire cultural and technological boom came basically out of nowhere. And the biggest issue is their origin, as experts cannot agree from where these people came from. It seems plausible that the Sumerians were a tribe that came from elsewhere, possibly from the steppes, but their exact origin is unknown. This historic issue is referred to since the 20th century as the Sumerian problem, quote-unquote. In any case, it's during the Ubaid period when there are advances that crystallized in the Uruk period and that served to consider this moment as the beginning of the Sumerian civilization. Some scholars also postulate that the Sumerians established in Mesopotamia would not have an autochthonous origin, but would come from the culture that founded the city of Mohenjo-Daru in India that existed between 2600 BC and 1800 BC. Wherever they may have come from, they were only of the most advanced ancient civilizations to live on Earth, and history tells us that many interesting facts and stories about the Sumerians, even today experts still do not have a complete picture that could tell them everything about the people that once inhabited the region of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Now, the timeline we know of Thoth and the Atlanteans, what was told to Plato, the ancient Greek, by Solon, and what was told to Solon by an ancient high priest of Egypt, of ancient Egypt, uh, at that time supposedly it was around 15,000 BC, and that uh, 11,000 years before that, making it around 26, 27,000 years BC, was when Atlantis sunk. So obviously the timeline of the Atlantean spreading uh, towards uh, various parts of the world and re-establishing cities with sphinxes and pyramids and other technology, as we see all around the world, was a lot 
uh, before Mohenjo-daro in India of 2600 BC. So it could be that the Atlanteans even stretched to India. Let's remember they also had the knowledge of flight. They had airplanes. Now, wherever they may have... Oh, maybe that's also why we have the hieroglyphs of um, the Temple of Abydos, the Temple of Seth in Abydos, Egypt, where we have those hieroglyphs of uh, various helicopters and jet airplanes, also submarines and things like that. Now, wherever they may have come from, they were one of the most advanced Asian civilizations to live on Earth, and history tells us many interesting facts and stories about the Sumerians. And uh, even today, experts still don't have a complete picture that could tell them everything about the people that once inhabited this region of the Tigris-Euphrates rivers, Mesopotamia. The Ubaid period, the start of civilization, uh, the Ubaid period, 6,500 to 3,800 BC, that's about, uh, okay, eight and a half thousand years ago, is a prehistoric period of Mesopotamia. The name derives from Tel al Ubaid, where the earliest large excavation of Ubaid period material was conducted initially by Henry Hall and later by Leonard Woolley, divided into four main phases and spreading from Eridu and Ubaid culture. The Ubaid culture extended from the middle of the Tigris and Euphrates to the shores of the Persian Gulf and then spread down past Bahrain to the copper deposits at Oman. The first city on earth, according to the Sumerian king list, Eridu was the first city in the world. The opening line reads, Nam Luga Anta Ed De A Ba. Now the kingship from heaven was lowered, the kingship was an Eridu. As noted by Sumerian mythology, the ancient city of Eridu was one out of the five ancient cities built on earth before the great flood, the great deluge. Eridu was the most southern city of the conglomerate of Mesopotamia and important center of the cult of the god of water, Enki. The Sumerian king list, when gods ruled the earth, one of the most valuable artifacts discovered from the Sumerian civilization is the so-called Sumerian king list. This ancient text describes in great detail the time when earth was ruled by beings referred to as gods, quote-unquote, and they lived for thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. The list composed in ancient Sumerian offers details about numerous generations of kings that ruled over the land of ancient Sumer. The list not only offers us their names, but it details their supposed legend and location of kingship. Alulim became king. He ruled for 28,800 years. Al-Aljar ruled for 36,000 years. Two kings, they ruled for 64,800 years. Then Eridug fell and the kingship was taken to Bad Tibira. And in Bad Tibira, and Menlu Anna ruled for 43,200 years. The ancient astronaut theory, the Anunnaki gods, as noted by the ancient astronaut theory thousands of years ago, even before recorded history. Our planet was visited by astronauts from another world, extremely advanced beings with technology beyond our own today came to Earth and helped kickstart modern civilization. Now, if you uh, listen to the video of Manly P. Hall concerning the Atlanteans and the Anunnaki, uh, he describes for what he believes that they can be, uh, they were, and they can be even around today. And uh, these various uh, UFOs that we see that zap in and out of interdimensional levels could actually be the leftovers of the Atlanteans that are still in hiding today. And uh, they are, of course, somehow repentant, and they are not about to give their highly advanced technology to uh, the way, uh, at the level we are thinking now. And he believes that these, what we call uh, space aliens or extraterrestrials, are actually our ancestors from Atlantis. And they're still around today. They're just hiding in either underground uh, areas or 
even under undersea, under ocean areas, and uh, areas that we don't know of yet. Now, uh, it's, it could be that's this. Uh, it's a very uh, alluring, uh, detailed study of what he makes concerning this. This is also what uh, Thoth writes in the Emerald Tablets, and you'll find that playlist in my videos. So. Uh, somehow they came around, and they don't know where they came from, to kickstart modern civilization. Now, in the 19th century, archaeologists explored the ancient ruins of Nineveh, discovered 22,000 clay tablets. After translation, these tablets showed amazing similar stories to those found in the Judeo-Christian Bible. We find stories of the Great Flood in these tablets, and we can even read of Adam and Eve, so basically all of those stories have proceeded with ancient Sumerians. In 1976, author Zachariah Sitchin published his personal translations of the Sumerian texts in a series of books called The Earth Chronicles. According to Sitchin, the clay tablets described an alien race known as the Anunnaki who came to Earth to mine gold. Sitchin practically suggests that extraterrestrials Visiting Earth visited Earth in the past because their home planet needed gold to survive. The gold deposits in their atmosphere were depleted, so they came to Earth, mined old gold, and took it back to their planet to save it. Today, numerous authors around the world believe Sitchin was right, despite the fact that mainstream scholars completely disagree with his theories. Ancient astronaut theorists agree that based on numerous archaeological discoveries, artifacts, records, and monuments found in the past by experts. It's believed that the Anunnaki, Sumerian, those who came down from the heavens, an extremely advanced civilization from the elusive planet in our solar system, came to Earth from an elusive planet, landing in the Persian Gulf some 432,000 years ago. Events before the Deluge, 450,000 years ago, on Nibiru, a distant member of our solar system, life faces slow extinction as the planet's atmosphere erodes. Deposed by Anu, the ruler Alalu, escapes in a spaceship and finds refuge on Earth. He discovers that Earth has gold that can be used to protect Nibiru's atmosphere. 445,000 years ago, led by Enki, the son of Anu, the Anunnaki land on Earth established Eridu, that's Earth Station 1 for extracting gold from the waters of the Persian Gulf. 430,000 years ago, Earth's climate mellows. More Anunnaki arrive on Earth, among them Enki's half-sister Nin Hur Sag, chief medical officer. 416,000 years ago, as gold production falters, Anu arrives on Earth with Enlil, the heir apparent, and is decided to obtain the vital gold by mining it in southern Africa. Drawing tools and lots, Enlil wins command of Earth mission. Enki is relegated to Africa. On departing Earth, Anu is challenged by Alalu's grandson. 400,000 years ago, seven factional settlements in southern Mesopotamia, including a spaceport Sipar, mission control center at Nippur, a metallurgical center Shurupak, the ores arrived by ships from Africa, the refined metal is sent aloft to orbiters manned by Igigi, then transferred to spaceships arriving periodically from Nibiru. 380,000 years ago, getting the support of Igigi, Alalu's grandson attempts to seize mastery over Earth, the Enlilites win the war of the Olgen, Olden gods. 300,000 years ago, Syria, the Anunnaki toiling in the gold mines mutiny. Enki and Nin Hursag create primitive workers through uh, genetic manipulation of ape women. They take over the manual chores of the Anunnaki. Enlil raids the mines, brings the primitive workers to the Eden in Mesopotamia. Given the ability to procreate, Homo sapiens begins to multiply. 200,000 years ago, life on Earth regresses during a new glacial period. 100,000 years ago, climates warm again. The Anunnaki, the biblical Nephilim, to Enlil's growing annoyance, marry the daughters of men. 75,000 years ago, the accursation of Earth, a new ice age begins. Regressive types of man roam the Earth, Cap Cro-Magnon, man survives. 
49,000 uh, 49, years ago, Enki and Nin Hursag elevate humans of Anunnaki parentage to rule in Surubak. Enlil, enraged, plots mankind's demise. 13,000 years ago, realizing that the passage of Nibiru in Earth's proximity will trigger an immense tidal wave, Enlil makes Anunnaki swear to keep the impending calamity a secret from mankind. And we know 13,000 years ago, just about then, was the Younger Dryas period. This article, Ancient Sumer, the Anunnaki and the Ancient Alien Theory, was originally created for Ancient Code, is published here under Creative Commons on Collective Spark. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.